So I got a question about that verse that Jesus says, don't think I came to destroy the law and the prophets. And the person seemed to legitimately be asking a question. I've had false teachers use that as a battering ram. Even after I've laid out the functionality of the law, showed them how we've died to it, we're freed from it, we're not under it, it's come to its end. It was merely a schoolmaster to teach us that our own personal obedience doesn't cut it in terms of righteousness. And through our performance to the law, we could never get a not guilty verdict. So it leads us to the Savior. We put our faith in Jesus Christ where we get the not guilty verdict and we're made righteous in his sight, independent from the law. But a lot of times, even though I've shown clearly and precisely from the scriptures that we have died to law, the law has come to its end. We've been freed from the law and we're not under the law. They'll quickly bring up this verse here where Jesus says, don't think I came to destroy the law and the prophets, which again just shows their inability to notice context, to pay attention to context, and also to rightly divide the word of truth. So this is the context. This is Jesus. He's born of a woman. He's born under the law, and he came to speak to those under the law. This is before the cross. This is before his atoning sacrifice. This is before he said it was finished. So. We'll go ahead and start here at verse 17. Think not that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For I tell you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and teach men to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do them and teach them, they shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall not wise enter the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to go back at 17. We'll start there. Think not that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now my position and the position of scripture is that all was fulfilled when Jesus said it was finished. When Jesus said it was finished, it was a completion of his entire obedient life under the law by which we are made righteous according to scripture. Just as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through the one man's obedience the many are made righteous. So according to scripture, it was through the obedient life of Jesus Christ that we're made righteous, not through our obedience. We enter into that righteousness simply by faith in Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 3, verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. That we collectively and equally share the righteousness of the one man's obedience. And we access that righteousness by faith. The Bible indicates that as being God's righteousness, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. And so our righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Now down on verse 20, for I say to you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's important to note that the righteousness that the scribes and the Pharisees were trying to seek was that through the law. That they're trying to get a righteousness through their performance and their obedience to the law. But the righteousness that we get that exceeds theirs is through faith in Jesus Christ and it's independent from the law. As Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, May I be found in him having a righteousness not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So the scribes and the Pharisees were always trying to find a righteousness of their own through the law. We get a righteousness that's not of our own. It's not through the law. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. That righteousness exceeds the scribes and the Pharisees because it's God's righteousness, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. See, the mentality of the scribe and the Pharisee was to work for favor, to try to get righteous, and to try to be justified in the sight of God. Romans chapter 4, verses 4 and 5 says, To the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages due. And that's the scribes and the Pharisees under the law, trying to work to get favor, trying to be justified, trying to be made righteous. 
But the next verse says, to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So the one who's not working, not looking to the law, not looking to their obedience, not looking to their performance, to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him, that's Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, that's a non-guilty verdict, his faith is accredited to righteousness. We see that according to the scripture, that righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees because it's God's righteousness that God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So in Christ Jesus, we collectively and equally share his righteousness. And it was completely law independent. See, the people who go back to the law, like the scribes and the Pharisees, to try to get righteous, they nullify the grace of God. Paul said, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. I do not nullify the grace of God or make the grace of God void, for if righteousness came through the law, if my right standing came through my performance and my obedience, then Christ died needlessly. So the Pharisees and scribes back then are like the ones today. They nullify the grace of God by going back to law performance to try to get right and righteous in the sight of God. But like the Pharisees and scribes today, they're completely ignorant of the stringency and the demands of the law. They think they can actually be made righteous due to their performance, but the law demands a perfect score. The Pharisees and the scribes, they relied on the works of the law to try to be justified and made righteous in the sight of God, but that is a curse. The scripture says all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, for cursed is everyone who doesn't continue to do all things in the book of the law to perform them. The law demands a perfect score. You have to do everything perfectly and completely without fail, something only Jesus was able to do. Which takes me back up to Jesus' statement. Do not think I came to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. He is the only one that fulfilled them. And so when he said it was fulfilled, it was finished. And now the law has passed away for those who believe in Christ. The law hasn't passed away for the unbeliever. They'll be judged by the law on the day of judgment. See, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. For the case for the believer, these things have been fulfilled, so the scripture says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That when we believe in Jesus Christ, the law has come to its end. See, we're not looking to the law to try to establish our right standing or our righteousness before God. That's something that the Pharisees and the scribes try to do. That's why Paul said, I testify about them. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness or seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So the scribes and the Pharisees are ignorant of the righteous demands of the law and what it actually demands to be tried to made righteous under it, which ultimately shows that they're ignorant of God's righteousness. And so being ignorant of God's righteousness, the scripture says they're seeking to establish their own righteousness. That's not us, because as Paul said, being found in him, not having a righteousness, not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. We're not trying to establish our own righteousness. It's not about a righteousness of our own through the law. Those who are ignorant about the righteous demands of the law are seeking to establish their own righteousness under it, thinking and believing that they actually can. And the scripture says they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. See, if you haven't believed, the law hasn't come to its end for you. And so until heaven and earth pass away, until that person is judged under that law, that law will not pass away for the unbeliever. But for those who believe, the law has come to its end. Christ is the end of the law for a right standing before God or for righteousness to those who believe. You see the scripture say in Acts chapter 13, verse 39, through him, everyone who believes is freed from all things through which they could not be freed from through the law of Moses. That when you believe in Jesus Christ and you put your faith in him, you're freed from the law. And the reason why is all things have been fulfilled on our behalf. Those who put their faith in Jesus Christ, all things have been fulfilled. There's no more purpose for the law in terms of it never could make us righteous. It never could make us justified. Something that Pharisees were completely ignorant of. 
And so it's merely a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ so that we'd be justified. Then we're freed from the law and we're not under it anymore. The law was a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. But once you've been justified by faith, you're no longer under the schoolmaster. The schoolmaster shows us that we're guilty, unrighteous, and all our obedience, all our best attempts and efforts end in catastrophic failure. No matter how hard we would attempt to try to establish our own righteousness, it would never happen. And so being completely aware of God's righteousness, we're not ignorant of God's righteousness, we're aware of it, so we're submitting to the righteousness of God, which is we're believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for our righteousness and not looking to the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So we see from these collection of passages that the law has come to its end. We've been freed from the law. We're not under the law. In Romans chapter 7, it says, Brothers and sisters, you have died to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you might be joined to another. That is him who has been raised from the dead. So again, the Bible using some of the strongest terms possible when it comes to our relationship to the law. We have died to the law. We have been freed from the law. We're not under the law. And the law has come to its end. See, the scripture is using that term, you have died to the law. Today, we use sort of a vernacular that says the person has passed away. When a person has died, they have passed away. And that's what the scripture is saying. When we have died to the law, the expectations and obligations for our personal obedience in accordance to it has passed away as well. We're looking to Jesus Christ solely for our redemption or sanctification or righteousness or justification. And all of those things are accessed merely by faith in Jesus Christ alone. One of the strongest examples, too, that the law has passed away is right here in this very context when you go even down a few more verses. Notice this here in verse 22, Jesus says, um, let me highlight this. He says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. And whoever shall say you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave thy gift at the altar and go thy way first to be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Now, this has to do with an aspect of the law before the cross that nobody does anymore. Gentile Christians or Jewish Christians, they do not bring a gift to the altar. They do not bring an animal sacrifice to the altar, which would be part of the law and the prophets. So if somebody was to come up and say, well, Jesus said the law won't pass away till all be fulfilled. If they're going to insist on that, then you have to ask them, are they being obedient to the law? Are they taking an animal sacrifice to the altar? Because Jesus said not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law till all be fulfilled. And if they think that being fulfilled is some distant thing way beyond the cross and not when Jesus said it was finished then they need to be obedient to the law and then take their animal sacrifice to the altar as a gift before they try to reconcile with their brother. See, the reason why Jesus is saying these things in verses 21 down to 26 is because these things have to do with the law. And he's showing these people that if you are going to seek to be justified or made righteous under the law, the stringency that it would actually demand. So when we see the context of this, it becomes very clear what Jesus is saying. He's not speaking to Gentiles. He's speaking to Jews before the cross, before his redemptive atoning work, before he said it was finished and before everything had not been fulfilled. So false teachers that use this verse, you know, that the law hasn't passed away because Jesus said it won't pass away till all be fulfilled once again shows their inability to rightly divide scripture. The scripture says to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. And we see that when we've rightly divided the word of truth, we can understand the functionality of the law, that we have died to the law, the law has come to its end, we've been freed from the law, and we're no longer under the law. And so for us who believe there's no more law, and that's what the scripture says, the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. So the law brings about the wrath of God, something that the Pharisees and scribes and the people that are self-righteous today and hold to false gospels, they are trusting in the law. 
and the means that they're ultimately trusting in their own obedience and that will ultimately bring about the wrath of god but for us there's no more law jesus has fulfilled the law and the prophets and it has passed away for us and so where there is no more law there is no more transgression so i hope this cleared up things brothers and sisters it was good for me to go over these passages again to try to clarify and rightly divide things also new subscribers people that have come to the channel may not have seen that older video and also the pharisees and the scribes and the works righteousness people today who constantly abuse this verse and try to use it as a battering ram against people of the faith that they would see their folly in the way that they're interpreting these passages so god bless you brothers and sisters peace to you take care and i hope your night or day is going good take care